All right, let's spend a little time comparing populations based on sample data. Okay, we'll look at dot plots, the mean, and the mean absolute deviation. Then we'll also look at box plots, median, and the interquartile range. Of course, mean and median are measures of center, that's right. And MAD and interquartile range are measures of, right, the variability or how much the data are spread out. And then out of that, we'll make some observations. So what this is all based on, too, is sampling from a population. So you're going to do something like a survey or a questionnaire or interviews of people, and you're going to get some data. So let's pretend that you did a study on the great screen time debate. Who watches more screens, adult or teens? And you asked 30 adults and 30 teens how many hours did they spend watching screens, whether it's their cell phone or a computer or a tablet or the television, um, last week. Okay? And so let's go ahead and see what data you got. So here are the graphs for the adults and the teens. You can see there's uh, 30 data points for each one, ranging from 20 hours in the last week up to 40 hours. So let's go over to the right and ask our first question. What do you notice immediately from the dot plots? Because obviously they're very different. What do you think about how the adults' are data seems to be laid out and how the teens? Well, I think that it's obvious that the, the teens seem to have two groups, a cluster down here and a cluster up here, whereas the adults are more kind of around the middle with maybe a little bit of outlier up here. So that's interesting. You might ask yourself the question, why? Why would adults be more similar to one another and why might teens be, um, have, have some that are much lower and some that are much higher? Interesting question that we'll come back to. Now, let's go ahead and create, these are the dot plots here. Let's go ahead and create the, with the exact same data, let's put them on a box plot and see what those look like. Okay, now remember a box plot tells you the minimum and maximum. Those are the left and right hand points. The median, which is the middle point, and then the lower quartile and the upper quartile. That's the middle of the lower portion of the data and the middle of the upper portion of the data. Okay, so now let's ask ourselves the question, how do the dot plots, I'm sorry, the box plots represent what we see in the dot plots? Well, this is really interesting. We see that as far as the total amount is spread out, that um, the teens and adults are pretty similar. And you can see that on the dot plot and you can see it on the, the box plots here. But the middle of the data are much more spread out for the teens than they are for the adults. That's another way of saying that the adults are all seem to be clustered around some sort of middle point, but the teams don't seem to be clustered around that middle point. They looked a lot more spread out. So that's pretty interesting too. All right, now let's go ahead and put in some extra data here for the dot plots. What I've done here, you could do, calculate this from the points you see, but I won't make you go through that calculation now. The mean of the adults is 28.9, and the mean absolute deviation, the, the average distance of each point from that mean is 2.8. And for teens, the mean is 29.1, and the MAD is 8.1. Okay, we'll come back and discuss this in just a second. Let's do some similar numbers, but different, for box plots. We're going to put in the median for each and the interquartile range, which I've abbreviated here as IQR. Okay, so now let's ask ourselves some questions. First, based on the means of the two populations, which population watched screens more? Let's look over here at the mean. Adults 28.9, um, teens 29.1. Ooh, very close, very similar. You would have to say that teens on average watched screens more, but that it was very close. That's probably what you would describe there. Now, if we say based on the medians, which population watched screens more, then you would say, okay, well, based on the median, the adults at 28 are higher than the teens at 23.5. That's really interesting. What's going on there? Well, because the teens are kind of clustered into two groups, that can put the mean in some sort of middle territory that is um, maybe a better indication of the average, but doesn't really capture these two different um, clusters here. And same with the median. The median's either gonna be, it's the middle data, so it's either gonna be over here or clear over here. And it looks like that's the, it's this case over here. If there were two data points in the middle, it might be average to the, the middle point here. But so the median is getting a little bit thrown off because of the clustering of the data. Um, so both of these, median and mean, need a little bit of commentary before you can just say that one population is watches screens more than the other population. And some of that commentary would be based on the variabilities. So let's ask ourselves the question there. 
what do the MAD and the interquartile range say about the two populations, how, they, how those two populations vary? Well, here, the MAD, the mean absolute deviation, that's a measure, just like interquartile range, of how spread out the data are. And you can see for adults, it's 2.8. For teens, it's much greater because that, they're, they're much more spread out. So what that is telling you is that teens vary a lot more. Um, same with the interquartile range. For adults, it's only 4, but for teens, it's 16. That's much, much greater. So instead of just making conclusions based on the mean or the median, we also have to ask ourselves how the data are varying, and that will give us more, a more complete picture. So what conclusions can we draw from these data? Well, it's, there's some sort of story here that would probably be something like, the uh, adults and teens on average seem to watch about the same, but the real story is, is that adults are very similar to one another, whereas teens seem to be either much lower or much higher. That's the real story here. And so one of the questions we can ask ourselves too is, what else would we want to know? If we were going to do a follow-up study, what would we ask? And um, I think that we would probably want to get to the bottom of why these two clusters exist for teens. That's at least one thing we'd want to ask. Maybe these are the ones up here, the ones who have smartphones, and maybe these ones down here are the ones who don't, or there could be some other explanation. I think it would also be interesting to think about which adults were surveyed. Were these people who use computers a lot at work, or were they not? And if they were or weren't, how would the numbers be different if there were a lot of adults who use computers at work? If we had some adults who use computers and some that didn't, would we see some kind of clustering in the adults, kind of like what we see for teens here? So lots of really interesting questions that you could ask in a follow-up study.